When you meet Kylie Minogue at home in London, you instantly realise why it's taken her so long to be taken seriously. She's just too normal, too nice, too easy to get along with to radiate that star quality. And do you do all the London things? Do you do the horse riding in Hyde Park and all that Never been things? horse riding in Hyde Park. You haven't? No. Been up to the top of Big Ben? No. Good Lord, woman, what have you been doing for 10 years? Oh, just a little bit of work <laughs> here and there. <laughs> What Kylie Minogue has been doing this past decade is bit by bit wearing down her critics. Until now, it's finally OK to say out loud you're a Kylie fan. Under piles of gold records and sell-out concert tours, she's buried all but the bitter memory of being so long dismissed as the singing budgie. I think there'll always be the tiniest little spark within me that's angry about that time. Has it made you it's tougher? Some, it's hard for me to think about that. Yeah, it's but hard it, for me to understand. But it must be part of who you are in the sense of you must be a different person as a result of all those experiences. That's the little spark that I mentioned. Looking back, it seems Kylie's great sin in the eyes of so many was the apparent ease with which she cast off her soap opera past to become a singer. Worse, to record meaningless ditties that happened to become huge hits. So lucky, lucky, lucky. There was a point at which you really seemed to annoy people. Mm. Have you ever sat down to try and analyse why that would be? Well, I think now that I know how difficult it is to have a number one single. I mean, I went into that music industry and had number one, number two, number one, number one. And now I know that the work and the time and energy, and so along comes this. I see. There's a chick from an Australian soap opera and everything's going her way. She's having so much success and she doesn't have a clue what she's doing. And I, c I can understand. I mean, I meet people now and say, I must have really annoyed you years ago. I said, hey, if I was you, I would have annoyed me as well. Mm. I am not wax. <laughs> Those same critics are now Kylie admirers. Now even London's smart set have lined up to contribute to her new book. Another famous expat, Clive James, was even moved to poetry. A soul pure beyond measure lights up our living treasure, appreciated highly our national thimble, Kylie. And you yeah. like this man. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he contacted us afterwards and said, oh, is she OK with it? Did, you know, I think because of the whole small thing. I was saying, are you kidding? It's great. I love it. <clears throat> the other one that's in here is Dame Edna Reveridge, and mm. he, she says, I heartily recommend her to any film company that cares to employ her. Her typing skills are terrible, <laughs> but she's a real star and I adore her. Bless. Now, how did you get these two grand old men with their own complicated egos, you know, they're eating out of your hand. How did Aww. you do that? Well, I've met both of them. And I was so excited to meet Barry Humphreys. So I asked him about it then and... He said yes. Yeah, and he had a really... I basically said, not only can you do it, but can you do it by tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> She's nice, that little Sheila, eh? I think we can but as Kylie control, tells it, there was a fee. Can. Performing on stage in London with every Australian's nightmare, the Humphreys character, Celeste Patterson. With a lovely young woman like that. And Celeste became very, very naughty. And um, you know his appendage yes. he had made its first <laughs> public appearance. But I didn't see it. I was running to the other end of the stage. Screaming. <laughs> we're, we're talking flashing. Yeah. 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 In a public place. <laughs> In front of a few thousand people. But like I say, I didn't see it. I missed it. Are you laughing about this? This was, yeah. <laughs> this was funny. Yeah. Judging by her book, it takes quite something to shock Kylie Minogue. Although a good few others have already been shocked by what the book contains especially shots of the much photographed Miss Minogue as she's never been photographed before. 
Did you know that this book was seized by customs in Hong Kong? I think I was the last person to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the last person to find out so many things. Yeah, which is a shame because that puts an angle on the book which is really not what it's about, you know. You're obviously comfortable with nudity. Mm. How does that come to be so? I normally blame it on being Australian. <laughs> When you do those kind of sessions, it's not like you're prancing about starkers around the studio. You kind of get in position and you take the final bit of clothing off and pretty much the people there see the photograph that, that you end up seeing. So it's all, it's all done tastefully, I think. Or, you know, so as not to embarrass anybody. But I, no, I just don't mind. Kylie says this book is part of the process of coming to terms with who she is. Instead of being embarrassed about her neighbour's days and those early songs and early stage performances, it's her way of celebrating that she's come out the other end of it all and her way of thanking those like Michael Hutchins who helped her along the way. Oh, I just think it's a beautiful picture. Mm. And his eyes in photographs still look like they're looking at you. I think it's beautiful. That was a photo session that I was doing and he was there, so we just did a picture together. Mm. Does it remind you of times? Yeah. I don't want to go into that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to talk about. Mm. Yeah. Can I ask why? Um, I, I don't know. What I, what I have to say is... I, I couldn't say in an interview. I'm not, maybe I will one day. I've, I've already spoken about, um, you know, my, my reaction after his death. But no, he's, he's around and I know he's taken care of me and that's all that matters to me at the moment. From the first day I saw her, I knew she was the one. She stayed Some of Michael Hutchins' close friends are still taking care of Kylie. The alternative rock musician from Melbourne, Nick Cave, has lent her not only support but credibility. He's the antithesis of me. He's just a supremely cool guy. And who, I mean, that's why it was such an amazing union as well, that people would go, I've just got to hear this song. I've got to know what this is about. On the third day he took me to the river He showed me the roses and we kissed and the last It was he who asked her to record what would become the best-selling duet Where the Wild Roses Grow which spun her career into a new, more sophisticated direction. It was Nick Cave also who dared her to confront her past by persuading her to read out the words to I Should Be So Lucky in front of the whole of literary London at the Royal Albert Hall. And when you got to I Should Be So Lucky, 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 lucky. Yeah, which I dragged out, of course. Uh, do it. I should be so lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. And then the final, the final part, I... I I thought my luck has got to run out. I should be so lucky in love. Thank you very much. <laughs> kind of scurried off the back of the stage. Miss Minogue from London had confronted little Kylie from Melbourne and it was cathartic. It was like I met her and said, okay, I know you've embarrassed me, but I really do love you and all right, let's go, <laughs> you know. And uh, from that point onwards, embraced that, embraced my career from the beginning, for better or worse. It was like a, like getting married. Sorry, Billy. <laughs> I kept thinking, what is he doing? It's like it's like having a large dog <laughs> running up against you. <laughs> and what's that like, Ellen? <laughs> Kylie Minogue is a study in contradictions. <laughs> an international star who behaves like the girl next door, an overnight sensation 
still going strong after more than a decade. A beacon for Australian performers. I naively thought that, oh yeah, by mid-late 20s I'll have a baby or two. Hmm. Do you feel like you're running late? Do you hear a loud ticking in the middle of the night? <laughs> tick, tick, tick. Um, like 60 minutes tick. <laughs> God. Um, I'm not panicking yet, but occasionally, yes, I do think, hmm, yes, must get a move on. At age 21 and probably no doubt feeling the, um, the pressure of fame, you said, I had everything but I had nothing. I would rather have had a little shop, which is what I've always dreamed of, to get married and have kids. My, how we change. <laughs> Yeah, I used to have simple dreams now. I'm just way too complicated for my own good. <laughs> oh, where did it go? <laughs>